Hello and welcome this morning to Awaken Yoga. Um, you'll notice, hi Mark, we're just getting started. Thanks for joining us this morning. I do have this, um, I do have this recording, so if you don't want to be seen, you can always turn the video off on your screen. And if you open your chat box, you'll see that I posted the three gunas, which I wanted to talk a little bit about before getting started. I usually talk a little bit about yoga philosophy and then do a brief meditation before starting the asana practice. So um, the three gunas, if you're not familiar with them, are sattva, rajas, and tamas. And so sattva is like the balanced state of awareness. When you're feeling balanced, when you're feeling calm, um, when you're feeling harmonious, joyful, Rajas is the more high energy state when you're feeling maybe like there's too much energy running through your body and you just got to get it out. You got to do something. Maybe you got to go for a run or do a really strong asana practice or your mind is just racing. That would be Rajas. And I have it spelled out in the chat area so that you can see if you're unfamiliar with the term. And then uh, Thomas is the more dull state when maybe you're feeling like you need a nap or you're feeling lazy or unmotivated and you just can't seem to get yourself going. And so what I wanted to talk about is how to balance this out throughout our day and continually bring us back into a state of sattva or balance. And so my suggestions are, of course, we can use some of the practices that we do on our mat, like different types of breath work. So we'll work with, for example, the alternate nostril breathing can help to calm you down if you're feeling too high energy, or the breath of fire can help to bring you up if you're feeling a bit low. But there are things that are also available for you to do just off the mat. You know, like if you're feeling really high energy, you might bring things down by reading a book or maybe laying in the sun or going to the beach when we can all go to the beach again. Um, or if you're feeling like too low energy, you know, you might go for a run or do a workout or something like that. So there's lots of ways to bring yourself back into balance. And so on our yoga mat today, what I'd like to do is we're going to start out with some meditation and breathing, and then we'll do kind of a yang practice where we build our energy and get kind of moving and going, and then I'll do more of a yin practice toward the end to sort of help calm us down, and that way we'll have... Um, all three states working together to hopefully bring us into some sort of balance. So that's the general theme and idea for today. So if you want to go ahead and get comfortable in your seat and close your eyes, we'll begin with our meditation. Take a deep breath in, drawing down from the deep recesses of your belly, moving that breath up, through your rib cage and into your lungs, and then turn your head to the left and exhale twice. Bring your head back to center, and we'll begin to watch our breath as it moves through the body at its own natural pace. Notice if you're feeling a little high energy this morning or a little more low energy little rajas, a little tamas. See where that breath is, check in with the breath. And then go ahead and draw that energy from the limbs of your body into the trunk of your body. And send that energy up your spinal column. As it rises up the spinal column, 
focus it into the sun center or third eye. And then send that energy out in front of you about three feet as a golden ball of light. Send that golden ball of light around you to the left, to the back, to the right, and to the front. You'll send this healing energy around you three times until you feel like you're floating in this golden ball of light. Then I want you to picture yourself walking up the side of a mountain, winding your way around the base of the mountain. Just observing what's around you, noticing if there are trees or if it's clear and you can see far out into the distance. Maybe noticing if there are sounds of birds or maybe traffic, depending on where your mountain is located. See if you can pick up on any smells in your environment. Maybe it's rocky. Maybe you can smell the earth. Maybe it's filled with green, lush grass just after a rainfall. Maybe you can hear birds. And once you've gotten to the top of the mountain, just go ahead and sit down in this golden ball of light that surrounds you. This is the high place of meditation. Take a few moments just to rest here and relax. And as you come into this balanced state of awareness, we'll begin to add our alternate nostril breathing. So if you're not familiar with this technique, you'll just bring your two fingers touching that third eye. And then you'll take the right, it'll be the right hand. You'll take your right thumb and you'll take your left two fingers, the pinky and ring finger, and just rest them for the moment. You'll close off that left nostril with your pinky and ring finger, leaving the right nostril open. You'll go ahead and take a deep breath in through the right nostril. And then close off that right nostril and let the breath out through the left. Then taking a deep breath in through the left nostril. You'll close that left nostril and then breathe out the right. Again, breathing in through the right side and closing the right side off and exhaling through the left nostril. Breathing in through the left and closing the left to exhale through the right. Take a few more of these at your own pace.
And when you feel ready, just go ahead and lower your hand and breathe normally. Resting in that calm state of awareness that you've created. by balancing the Ida and Pingala, the right and left sides of the body into the Shashumna, which is the middle channel that runs through the midline of the body. And from here, we'll just go ahead and take our arms above our head. You may want to keep your eyes closed as you raise those hands high up towards the sky, palms to touch, and then opening them back up, drawing them down the body. Just a little gentle movement, bringing them up again on the inhale and down on the exhale. We'll begin to feel parts of the body waking up, our shoulders, biceps, triceps, stretching our fingertips long, We'll take one more deep breath in, coming up to the top, and then we'll just let that drop away, letting those hands drop to the side. We'll then take this moment to switch legs. So if you have one leg in front of the other, go ahead and switch. And then we'll begin to roll our shoulders up and back and around. Pulling those shoulders to the ears and then dropping them down the back, feeling those shoulder blades drawing together and then separating as you bring them forward. We'll reverse direction. Everything building just a little bit more movement this morning. And then go ahead and settle in your seat. And we'll bring our heads over to the left, down towards the middle, dropping the chin, and then sending it off to the right. And if your neck is flexible and you don't have any injuries, you can send it all the way around to the back making some nice gentle head circles. Once you get back down to the middle, you'll go ahead and reverse the direction. And then from here, you'll take another deep breath in and sigh everything out. As we begin to awaken that more Raja side of our state of being, we'll begin with the breath of fire. If you haven't done the breath of fire before, you're basically gonna be drawing the breath in through the nose and then your belly will expand out during that breath. So the easiest way to start the breath of fire and feel that sense of the, 
belly drawing in is to actually begin by sticking your tongue out and just making this sound like this. And as you do that, you can feel your belly pull in and the breath automatically comes back by itself. So you don't have to take a breath in, it just comes back. So we'll do a few more with our mouths open and then we'll go ahead and close our mouths and have that same sensation that we do, but with our mouths closed. Keep going now with the mouth closed, inhaling. beginning to bring some heat, build some heat into our bodies. We'll do this another 30 seconds. And then just let that breath go, close your eyes and let your body feel the sensations that arose. Sometimes this wakes us up and we feel the urge to move and other times it sort of gives us this quiet, calming feeling afterwards. Just resting for a moment wherever you are. Go ahead and open your eyes if you haven't already and come to stand at the top, top of your mat. And we'll just begin with some movements to get our bodies warmed up. So maybe take those feet a little bit wider than you normally would. And we're gonna bring our hands, circling them overhead dipping our bodies all the way down to the ground, scooping up the energy as we move around towards the ground. On the inhale, rising up, and on the exhale, circling all the way down. We're making big circles, waking up our spine. Waking up our arms and our legs, maybe bend those legs as you move over. And when you next get to the top, go ahead and send yourself over in the other direction. Letting yourself flow with your breath. Maybe begin to add that ujjayi breath here, drawing in through the nose and making that oceanic self sound by closing off the back of your throat or maybe even sighing it out and we'll all meet back up here at the top bringing our hands to touch and then drawing them down to our heart center Go ahead and step those feet back together, hip distance apart. Stepping toward the top of your mat, we'll begin with some sun salutations this morning. So as we draw those hands high overhead, we'll take a big inhalation. As we dive forward, exhale, coming down to a forward fold. Looking up, reaching up, maybe putting your hands on your shins, flattening out that back, 
And then forward folding again. Plant those hands on the mat. Stepping back your right and your left foot into a plank position. And then coming down into your chaturanga. You can lower your knees if you need to, or just go ahead and squeeze those arms close to you. Not reaching the mat entirely, bringing yourself up into an upward facing dog, and then pushing gently back to your downward facing dog. Here we'll just take a moment to pedal out the feet. And then we'll take a nice deep breath in and sigh it out. Go ahead and walk those feet back up to the top of the mat, folding over your legs. And then taking a halfway lift, straightening out that back as you then dive up again towards the top, hand to touch. Bringing the hands to heart center. Taking another deep breath in, we'll raise those hands above the head, dynamic fingertips, and then dive forward. Coming into our forward fold. Relaxing our neck. And then coming to our halfway lift, straightening everything, lengthening everything. And then planting those hands, stepping back into our plank position. We'll take two breaths in this plank before we lower down. And then go ahead, drawing those elbows close to your chest as you lower down, scooping up to the sky, opening that heart into your upward facing dog, pressing those hips gently back toward the ceiling, coming into a downward facing dog. Letting your neck relax here as you look back or gaze back between your knees. We'll again walk toward the top of the mat, forward folding. Into a halfway lift on the inhale and then diving up towards the sky, bringing your hands to your heart center. We'll go ahead and take three more of these sun salutations on our own, on your own breath at your own pace. So we'll begin now and you just go at your own pace. Maybe you like to breathe out heavily while you do this. Just draw that energy into your body. And when you've completed your three, We'll all just meet together standing in mountain pose.
And from here, we'll move on by gently taking that right leg behind us into a crescent lunge, bending that left leg. You should be high on your toes and that right leg. You should feel your right leg drawing down. Your left knee and ankle should be aligned. And we'll take our hands high up to the sky and take a little bit of a back bend here. From here, we'll go ahead and twist over to the left. So we're opening both of our arms out. And then we'll send our hands to a prayer position and gently bend down towards our knee, placing that right hand on the outside of the left knee for a twist. So you'll be twisting to the left. We'll draw ourselves back up to center, sending those hands back out as we go to the front again, lining those hips up, taking those hands to the sky. We'll then send them down to the mat, step back into our plank pose, and taking ourselves through a gentle flow as we continue to build heat. You'll walk your feet towards the front of the mat, taking a nice forward fold, maybe wrapping your arms behind your legs. Bending your knees deeply if it's needed. And then we'll go ahead and dive back up towards the top. This time sending our left foot back high on the toes. Deep bend in that right knee. As we open and twist over toward the right side. Arms stretching toward either side of the room. Feeling like there's a tug of war maybe your friends are having with your hands. Bringing your hands to a prayer position as you lower that left elbow towards your right knee, twisting open. On the next inhalation, you'll come back up into that twist. And then you'll square off your hips to the front, bringing those hands high to the sky, and then letting them come down to frame your foot, flattening your hands and stepping back into your plank position. Go ahead and take that flow on your own breath at your own pace. And we'll all meet back in a downward facing dog. On the next inhalation, you'll send that right foot high to the sky, keeping your hips square here. Go ahead and bend that leg and draw your knee to your nose as you shift forward in the plank. Send that right leg back. And on the exhalation, send that knee to nose. One more time, sending that right leg back. And then drawing that knee to nose. This time, step that right leg through so that you're framing your hands with your foot. You'll go ahead and drop your knee, your left knee, onto the floor. And then bring those hands high above your head, taking a bit of a back bend, rotating those arms so that your pinkies are kind of turning in towards each other. Stretching out that hip. And then you'll place your hands back down on the ground. Lean slightly forward. And if it's in your practice, go ahead and see if you can grab that left foot with that left hand. And if not, that's fine. You can just leave that left foot on the ground and look over your shoulder. From here, you'll go ahead and if it's lifted, place that leg back. 
And then we'll go ahead and take our right foot, stepping back into a plank position, going through our flow once again, and leading back into a down dog. I'm starting to build some heat. Once we're all here in our down dog, you'll go ahead and lift up that left leg. And then you'll send it knee to nose. You drop forward into plank. On the inhalation, sending the left leg back up to the sky. On the exhalation, drawing that knee to nose. One more time, lifting that left leg high. And then drawing that knee to nose. This time we'll send the left leg all the way through. Hands on either side, you'll lower that right knee to the ground. And then go ahead and lift up, reaching for the sky, maybe letting your head fall back a little bit. Take one more breath here, and then dropping those hands to the ground, we'll go ahead and try to grab that right foot this time with our right hand. And if that's not available to you, just leave that right foot down as you twist open, placing that right hand on your thigh. On the next inhalation, go ahead and bring both hands back to front, planting those hands firmly into your mat as you take that left foot back into a plank position. From here, we'll go ahead and roll over into a side plank, keeping that right hand firmly planted into the ground. And if this is too much, you can always Lower your right knee down to the ground. Go ahead and twist back over into a regular plank position. And we'll open up on the other side, planting that left hand firmly. As we raise that right hand high into the sky, making sure our hips aren't sagging down toward the ground. And then coming back over and taking our flow on your own pace. This time we'll meet together in child's pose. Here we'll go ahead and send our chest forward, bringing our belly down to the ground. And in this neutral position, we'll just take a few breaths. From here, you'll go ahead and press your arms up into a sphinx pose by aligning those shoulders and elbows and stretching your hands out, remembering that you can check the distance by grabbing your elbows with your hands and then opening them back up. And that'll give you the proper alignment and distance for your sphinx pose. Flattening those tops of the feet on the floor. Looking forward, sending your heart forward. Drawing a deep breath into your rib cage. Maybe exhaling it out.
And then we'll go ahead and draw everything back down to the ground. Resting our chin on our hands. We'll take one deep breath here. And then we'll tee our arms out to the sides. So they're like an airplane. And we'll push ourselves using our left hand next to our chest over that arm, leaving the arm behind us, rotating back, opening that leg. Maybe you want to bring your arm high to the sky and possibly send it around, maybe placing it on your back or taking that bind by clasping your hands together. On the next inhalation, gently bring everything back down to the floor, realigning yourself in a neutral position as you tee out those arms again and roll over to the other side. So this time you'll push your right hand into the mat, rolling onto that left side and taking that right foot behind you, drawing that arm up to the ceiling. Hugging the muscles to the bones. Maybe sending the hand behind you to rest on your lower back. Making sure your head is resting on the floor. Or possibly clasping those hands behind you. Taking a bind. On the next inhalation, we'll send everything back down to the mat, uncurling ourselves, hands behind us, chin on the mat, toes pointing to the back. On the next inhalation, we'll draw our hands and our feet up to a locust pose. Maybe you even want to bind those hands behind you as you draw up squeezing those shoulder blades together, and then releasing everything down to the ground. On the next inhalation, we'll go ahead and send ourselves up again, clasping those hands, pointing those feet, drawing back those shoulder blades, Taking in one more deep breath in and then exhaling everything down to the ground. This time, if it's in your practice, you can go ahead and grab your right foot with your right hand and your left foot with your left hand, drawing those heels towards the box maybe moving those knees close together, or if your lower back needs some gentle loving care, you can separate those knees out further. So you can stay here and rest in this position, or you can begin to push those ankles into your hands, drawing your shoulder blades back as you press up on your belly into a bow pose. Taking a few breaths in your bow and then lowering down on the next exhalation. We'll keep those hands clasped around our ankles as we send ourselves up one more time into bow, drawing those shoulder blades back pushing those ankles into our hands, lifting those thighs off the floor, and 
and then relaxing everything down on the next exhale. From here, you'll just take a few windshield wipers with your legs in the back to release that back. And then go ahead and send everything back down to a neutral position, placing your hands under your shoulders and pushing yourself up into a child's pose. One more child's pose. We'll go ahead and move through tabletop, curling our toes under, pressing those hips into the air, into a downward facing dog. This time you'll step that right leg through your hands, sending that left foot down to the ground as you cartwheel your arms open up into a warrior two position, drawing that tailbone down, shifting that knee, that right knee back towards your pinky toe, lifting your shoulders up and then releasing them down, drawing them away from your ears. You'll then go ahead and straighten your legs as you bring your arms up. Dancing warrior, exhaling as we bring ourselves down, bending that knee, inhaling as we send ourselves up. Again, exhaling down and inhaling up. One more time into that warrior two position. This time we'll go ahead and turn the palm over as we gently release back, exalting that warrior. Maybe you leave your neck looking up towards your elbow or hand, or possibly turn it so that it's looking towards your back foot. Opening up that side body as we send ourselves back through warrior two, coming to a side angle pose. Resting your elbow on your knee, Drawing that knee back towards your pinky, bending more deeply into the knee. And then drawing a big breath and straightening that leg, bringing the hands to touch. We'll go ahead and bring both feet forward. And dive forward, coming down. Resting our hands on the ground. You'll take that left hand and send it over to your right foot, grabbing that ankle. As you twist the right hand up towards the sky. On the next inhalation, Taking both hands back to center, bending forward, letting that neck drop, relaxing that head, shaking it yes, shaking it no. This time you'll send that right hand over toward the left ankle as you twist open with your left hand. Maybe looking out straight, maybe looking down, depending on how your neck is feeling. And then bringing both hands back down to the ground, folding over those legs, maybe bending those arms in a chaturanga position, releasing your neck. You go ahead and place your hands on your hips, and with the flat back, come all the way up to the top. From here, you'll go ahead 
and turn that left foot toward the side of the room, keeping that right foot angled back and bending your knee, drawing your arms out for a warrior two on the other side. Maybe bending a little bit more deeply into that left knee, making sure that it's still squared over your ankle, drawing those shoulders up towards your ears, and then drawing them back, pulling those shoulder blades together, plugging in those arms. From here, we'll take our dancing warrior, inhaling as we come to the top, straightening our legs, and exhaling as we send that knee back down. Inhaling, coming to the top. Exhaling, coming down. One more time, rising up to the top, then bending the left knee down, turning that left palm up, placing your right hand on your thigh as you draw that left arm toward your ear, reversing your warrior. Gently bringing both hands back through warrior two, and then resting that left elbow on that left knee, raising that right arm high toward the sky, spreading your fingertips, making sure you're not sinking into that left shoulder. Draw yourself up as if somebody's pulling that right hand up towards the sky. From here, we'll go ahead and cartwheel down, placing our hands on either side of that left leg, planting them into the ground, stepping back into a plank position, and then lowering our knees and sending ourselves back into a child's pose. From your child's pose, you'll just rest here for a few moments. And when you're ready in your own time, you'll come up to be sitting on your knees. So that you're in a thunderbolt position. From here, we're going to lean forward curl our toes under, and just give our ankles a nice stretch. You can stay here if the stretch is enough for you, or draw yourself back. Maybe you want to take your arm or your wrists and turn them around, giving them a little love. Circle them in one direction and then the other. From here, we'll bring our palms to our heart center, bow our head, take one deep breath, exhaling it out. As we move into the more tamas or slower portion of the class, we'll do some yin poses now. So we'll be holding them longer and we'll slow the pace down. So bringing ourselves forward into a tabletop position, we'll go ahead and take that right knee to the back of the right wrist, bringing that shin parallel to our mat as we scoot our left leg back into a pigeon pose. From here you can stay High on your fingertips or rest down on your elbows or place your head on the floor, whatever feels comfortable to you. And we'll be staying here for about five minutes. So go ahead and get comfortable.
Think about 30 more seconds, just letting gravity do the work. Go ahead and begin to push yourself back up, taking that right leg back into a tabletop position, lining everything up, shoulders above wrists, hips above knees. We'll just take a little break in between by taking a cat cow, sending your chest forward on the inhalation. And then drawing that belly in, arching that back up towards the sky, exhaling and bringing your chin to your chest. Taking a few more cat cows at your own pace. And on the next inhalation, you'll go ahead and bring that left knee towards that left wrist, drawing your shin parallel toward the mat or as close as it can get, and sending that other leg, right leg back. As you dip down, maybe resting your head on the floor, getting comfortable in your pigeon, We'll be here for about five minutes. Remember, if anything starts to feel uncomfortable, you can go ahead and sit back into a child's pose. about 30 more seconds. On the 
Next inhalation, go ahead and bring those arms back, walking them up, placing your legs close together into a tabletop position. Go ahead and breathe in deeply and sigh everything out. And then go ahead and grab a block if it's available to you. And we'll meet together down here on our backs. Lift those hips into the air with your legs pointing toward the ceiling and just place that block right under your sacral area, making sure it's not pressing into the lower back for a supported bridge pose. I recommend that you leave the block on the lowest setting because we're just trying to relax now bringing ourselves into a balanced state of awareness, bringing ourselves out of that more logistic practice. We'll be here for about three minutes. On the next inhalation, just lift the hips slightly and remove that block from underneath your sacral area, bringing those hips down to the ground. We'll go ahead and bring our legs gently into our chest, squeezing them in and rocking from side to side, giving our lower back a massage. And then you will send your arms out beside your legs, grabbing the edges of your feet as you raise your feet high into the air for happy baby, drawing those knees towards those armpits and opening those legs out, maybe rocking your baby from side to side. We're coming to a position of stillness. We'll be here for about three minutes. So go ahead and get comfortable. Let gravity do the work. Slow your breathing down. 
Make sure your lower back is still touching the ground. If you begin to feel at all uncomfortable in this position, you can just draw your knees gently in towards your chest and rest here. We have about 30 more seconds. Go ahead and release everything now back to center, pulling those knees in towards your chest, and then just taking those legs, laying them out to the outer edges of your mat into your final resting pose, Shavasana. So you'll go ahead and begin to slow that breath, letting go of your ujjayi breath, Letting your back and your buttocks and your legs and arms and shoulders just sink into the earth. While we're resting here, I'll go ahead and lay the singing bowl. So that you can just get lost in the sound.
On the next inhalation, you'll begin to bring your awareness back into your body. You'll begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Maybe rotating those arms and those legs and feet. Maybe rocking your head from side to side. Or stretching your arms above your body, pointing your feet. Stretching out long. And then drawing your legs to your chest, squeezing them gently towards your body. And rolling over into a fetal position. in your own time, at your own pace, coming back up to a comfortable seated position. Maybe keeping your eyes closed. We'll send our arms up above our head, hands to touch, bringing those hands down into a prayer position, Anjali Mudra, resting them at the heart center. Taking a deep breath in, sighing it out. As we just rest here for a moment, reflecting on what parts of the practice felt more sattvic or balanced, what parts were a little bit too high energy where you maybe needed to bring things down a little, the logistic part of the practice. And maybe where things were just a little too calm for you the tamas part of the practice. I'm reflecting on how you can balance those things in your life, the rajas and the tamas, in order to always bring yourself back to a centered and calm state of awareness. We'll close our practice today with the sound of a single ohm. Go ahead and draw your breath in. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Much peace, love, and light to you. Namaste.